Question 1a. Simplify m cubed times m raised to the power of 4. When the base variable or numbers are the same and we're multiplying, we must add the powers together. So essentially what we have is m cubed times m raised to the power of 4. The base variable m are the same, so we're going to add the powers together. So our answer is m raised to the power of 7. So our final answer is m raised to the power of 7. 1b. Simplify open brackets 5np cubed close brackets raised to the power of 3. I'm just going to rewrite this question as 5np cubed times 5np cubed times 5np cubed. Now I'm going to multiply the numbers and variables together. So I'm going to start off by multiplying all the fives together. So we have 5 times 5 times 5, which gives me 125. Now I'm going to multiply the n variables together. So we have n times n times n, which is n cubed. And then I'm going to multiply the p variables together. So we have p cubed times p cubed times p cubed. Now remember, if the base variables are the same, we're going to add the powers together. So you have p raised to the power of 9. Now I'm going to put it all together. So our final answer is 125 n cubed p raised to the power of 9. 1c. Simplify 32 q raised to the power of 9 r raised to the power of 4 divided by 4 q cubed r. It's important to remember when you're dividing and the base variables are the same, we're going to subtract the powers. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to divide 32 by 4. So 32 divided by 4 equals 8. I'm then going to divide q raised to the power of 9 by q raised to the power of 3. So q raised to the power of 9 divided by q raised to the power of 3. Now again, it's important to remember that if the base variables are the same and we're dividing, I'm going to subtract the indices. So we should have q raised to the power of 6. I'm now going to divide r raised to the power of 4 by r. So r raised to the power of 4 divided by r is equal to r cubed. I'm going to put the answers together. So our final answer should be 8 q raised to the power of 6 r cubed. So that's our final answer. Find the lowest common multiple LCM of 40 and 56. To solve this question, we're going to be using prime factor decomposition. Uh, so we're going to find the prime factors of 40. So 2, 20 over here. We have 2 again, 10 over here. And we have 5 and 2. So prime factor, prime factor, prime factor, and the last prime factor is 5. Do the same procedure again with 56. So 56, 2 and 28, 2 and 14, and 7 and 2. So the prime factors are 2, 2, 2, and 7. I'm then going to construct a Venn diagram. So we have 40 and 56. 
the common prime factors go in the middle. So the common prime factor are 2, 2, and 2. So there's three twos go in the middle. So the first two here, second two here, and the last two here. Uh, 5 goes over here, and 7 goes over here. Now to find the lowest common multiple, we're going to multiply all the numbers in both the circles. So LCM equals 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 7, which equals to 280. So the answer is 280. Question 2b, write down the highest common factor, HCF, of A and B. So again, to answer this question, we're going to construct a Venn diagram. So A, B. The common prime factors are three, five, two, and two. A, last two remaining here, and on this side we have five. Now to find the highest common factor, we need to multiply the numbers in the middle. So it's 3 times 5, which is 15, times again by 2, which is 30, times again by 2, which is 60. So our answer is 60. Question 3. The line L is shown on the grid. Find an equation for L. So the first thing I need to do is select two points on the graph. I'm going to select this point over here, which is 2, 0, and this point over here, which is 0 and minus 6. So let me just write this out over here. We have 0 and minus 6. And we have 2 and 0. I'm then going to label them x1, y1, x2, y2. So this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. Now I'm going to find the gradient of the line. So we're going to be using this general equation. So the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now I'm just going to substitute the values into the equation. So so y2 is 0 minus y1, which is minus 6, over x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is 0. So 0 minus minus 6 is 6. 2 minus 0 is 2. Simplify it further. So therefore the gradient, our gradient is 3. So we have, so far, equation of the line is 3x plus C. Now C is where the line crosses at the y-axis, so if we look at the graph, 
the line crosses the y-axis at minus 6, so therefore c is minus 6. So our final answer should be y equals 3x minus 6. That's our final answer. Question 4. Raya buys a van for £8,500 plus VAT at 20%. Raya pays a deposit for the van. She then pays the rest of the cost in 12 equal payments of £531.25 each month. Find the ratio of the deposit Raya pays to the total of the 12 equal payments. Give your answer in its simplest form. So the first thing we need to do is work out how much Raya pays for the van in total, which includes VAT. So we're going to multiply 8,500 by 1.2. which equals to 10,000 and 200 pounds it says in the question that Rhea pays 531 pounds and 25 pence each month for 12 months so that is let me just quickly do the math 531 pounds and 25 pence 12 months, so we're going to multiply that by 12, which equals to 6,375 pounds. To work out her deposit, we're going to minus 6,375 pounds from 10,200. So that is 10,200. Minus six thousand three hundred seventy five, which equals to three thousand eight hundred and twenty five pounds. So her deposit is. Three thousand eight hundred and twenty five pounds. So the question states that we need to form a ratio of the amount of deposit to twelve equal payments. Okay, so the deposit to twelve equal. Payments We know what the deposit was, so the deposit was three thousand eight hundred and twenty five pounds and the equal payment was twelve equal payments was six thousand. Three hundred and seventy five pounds. Now I'm going to divide both sides by three thousand eight hundred and twenty five pounds. So divide both sides by three thousand eight hundred and twenty five pounds, which gives us a ratio of one to five over three. Now I'm going to simplify it further by multiplying both sides by 3. So 3 times 1, which is 3. 3 times 5 over 3, which is 5. So our ratio is 3 to 5. Complete the table of values for y equals x squared minus x minus 6. So when x equals negative 2, Just going to substitute it into this equation to give us the value of y. So y equals open brackets minus 2 raised to the power of 2 minus minus 2 
close brackets, minus 6 equals 0. Okay, so first box over here should be 0. Now, when x is equal to minus 1, I'm going to re repeat the same procedure again. So y equals open brackets, minus 1, close brackets, raise it to the power of 2, minus open brackets minus one close brackets minus six equals minus four so we have minus four uh, when x equals to positive one so we have x equals to one again substitute into the equation so open brackets one raised to the power of 2 minus open brackets 1 close brackets minus 6 which equals to minus 6 so we should have minus 6 over here when x equals to 2 y equals to open bracket 2 raised to the power of 2 minus open brackets 2 close brackets minus 6 equals minus 4 so this is minus 4 and when x equals to 3 again substitute into the equation so we should have open brackets 3 raised to the power of 2 minus open brackets 3 close brackets minus 6 which equals to 0 5b on the grid draw the graph of y equals x squared minus x minus 6 for the values of x from minus 3 to 3 so from the previous question we were able to complete the table and find the values of x and y so I'm just going to plot these coordinates now so we have minus 3 and 6 so minus 3 and 6 is over here we have minus 2 and 0 minus 2 and 0 we have minus 1 and minus 4 so minus 1 and minus 4 we have 0 and minus 6 so 0 and minus 6 is over here we have 1 and minus 6 so 1 and minus 6 we have 2 and minus 4, 2 and minus 4. We have 3 and 0, so 3 and 0 goes over here. Now all I'm going to do now is join the points together. So that's our answer to uh, 5b. 5b. Use your graph to find estimates of the solution to the equation x squared minus x minus 6 equals minus 2. So what we need to do next is to draw a horizontal line from minus 2. Now once we've drawn the, the horizontal line from minus 2, we can read the values of x where the line intersects the curve. So let me just quickly draw a horizontal line from minus 2. right now I'm just going to read off where the line intersects so going upwards so one value of x is roughly minus 1.6 and the other value going upwards is and x equals uh, 2.6 and that's our final answer so we have x equals minus 1.6 and x equals 2.6 question 6 a force of 70 newtons acts on an area of 20 centimeters squared the force is increased by 20 newtons the area is increased by 10 centimeters squared Helen says the pressure decreases by less than 20%. Is Helen correct? You must show how you get your answer. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the original pressure. So O, which stands for the original pressure, original pressure is equal to 70 newtons divided by 20 centimeters squared. So the original pressure is 3.5 newtons per centimeter squared. The new pressure is, so N, which stands for new, pressure is equal to 80 newtons divided by 30 centimeters squared, which equals to 2.6 reoccurring newtons per centimeters squared. Now to find the percentage change we're going to be using this general equation. So if you remember percentage change equals new minus the old divided by the old. So the new was 2.6 reoccurring minus the old which was 3.6 5 divided by the old 3.5 oops which equals to 0 0.238095 minus sorry so I'm going to multiply it by 100, so to give us a percentage, so it'll be minus 23.8%. Therefore, Helen is wrong, because it's not less than 20%, so minus 23%. Question 7. Enlarge shape A by scale factor 1 third, center 01. So the center is 01. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select a point on shape A. So this point over here. How far is this point away from the center O1? Well, it's three squares going to the right and three up. So three to right, three up. Now the question says that we need to enlarge it by a scale factor of one third. So I'm going to multiply three going to the right by one third. So three multiplied by one third equals one. So we're going one to the right. And do the same again. So three times by one third equals going one up. So from the center O1 we're going one to the right and one up. So that's the new position over here. Now I'm going to repeat the same procedure again by selecting another corner. So I'm going to select this corner over here. So how far is this point away from the center O1? Again so let me just get rid of that and get rid of that. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six, six going to the right, and we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, six up. So it's six to the right, six up. 
Again, I'm going to multiply it by a scale factor of one third. So six times one third equals two. So two to the right. And six times one third equals two up. So we're going two to the right and two up from the center O1. So one, two, one, two. So that's the new position. Again, I'm going to repeat the same procedure. So let me just get rid of um, what I've got so far. So I've got rid of this line, this line over here. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Now I'm going to select this point. How far is this point away from the center O1? So we're going one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, six to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine going up and six going across. So again, I'm going to multiply it by a third. So six times third equals two to the right. And nine times a third, three up. So two to right, one, two, three up, one, two, three. And now last point is over here. I'm just going to get rid of everything that I've got so far. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this. And this. The last point I need to focus on is this point over here. How far is this point away from the center O1? Well, it's one, two, three, three going across, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you're going three across and nine up, and nine. So again, I'm going to multiply it by the scale factor one third. So three times one third equals one so you're going one to the right and nine times a third equals three up so we're gonna do we're gonna go one across a three up one two three now I'm just going to get rid of these lines over here. And now I'm going to join the points together. So that goes over here, that goes over here, that goes over here, and that goes over here. So now I've just enlarged uh, shape A, scale factor one third, and that's our answer. 60 people were asked if they preferred to go on holiday in Britain or in Spain or in Italy. 38 of the people were male. 11 of the 32 people who said Britain were female. 8 males said Italy. 12 people said Spain. One of the females is chosen at random. What is the probability that this female said Spain? So the first thing I'm going to do is construct a two-way table. So this is my two-way table. And now I'm just going to fill in the details. So 60 people in total were asked. So that's 60 over there. The question states 38 of the people were male. So 38 goes over here. The total males were 38. The next sentence states 11 of the 32 people who said Britain were female. So 11 goes over here. And 32 is the total that goes over here. 
The next sentence says, eight males said Italy. So eight goes over here. The next one says, tall people said Spain. So total of 12 said Spain. Now, all the information is given to us. So I'm just going to complete the 2A table. So this is 22. This is 21. Uh, this is 16. This is 8. This is 3. And this is 9. So the question states, one of the females is chosen at random. What is the probability that this female said Spain? So in total, there was 22 females asked uh, in this question. Uh, so three people, three females said Spain. So our answer would be three over 22. And that's the probability that this female said Spain. So that's our final answer. Question nine. Jean invests £12,000 in an account paying compound interest for two years. In the first year, the rate of interest is X percent. At the end of the first year, the value of Jean's investment is £12,336. In the second year, the rate of interest is X over 2%. What is the value of Jean's investment at the end of two years? So the first thing we need to do is find the rate of interest. To do this, we're going to be using the compound interest equation. Now, if you remember that the compound interest equation is PB multiplied by open bracket 1 plus R close bracket N equals FV. Now, PV stands for the present value. R is the interest rate, so rate of interest. N is the years, number of years. And FV is future values. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to substitute all the values given to us in this question into the equation. So the present value is £12,000. We have £12,000 multiplied by open brackets 1 plus R, which we want to find out. And 1 is after the first year is equal to uh, 12 thousand three hundred and thirty six pounds now I'm just going to rearrange the equation to solve for R so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to divide both sides by twelve thousand pounds so we have open brackets one plus R raised to power one is equal to twelve thousand three hundred and thirty six divided by twelve thousand Okay, so our answer should be 1 plus R is equal to 1.028. And then going to make R the subject by subtracting 1 from both sides. So R is equal to 0 0.028. I'm going to convert it into a percentage by multiplying it by 100. So therefore our interest rate should be R is equal to 2.8. Now we need to find the amount of money Jean will receive in year two. To do this, we're going to divide the interest rate 2.8 by 2. So the new interest rate now is 1.4%. So new interest rate 
is 1.4%. Now I'm going to convert 1.4% into a decimal, which will give me 0.014. I'm now going to substitute the new interest rate 0.014 into the compound interest equation. So we should have 12,336 pounds times open brackets one plus the new interest rate in decimals 0.014 close bracket. Okay, we're going to multiply it together. So let me just rewrite that down. So 12,336 times 1.014, which equals to 12,508 pounds and uh, 0.04 pence. So that's our final answer. 10a, on the grid, draw and label vector minus 2a. So the first thing we need to do is find the vector of A and the vector of B. So vector A is one positive or to the right and two up. So vector A can be written as one, two. Vector B, so we're going down by three and one to the right. So vector B can be written as One to the right, minus three. Three going down, one, two, three, and one to the positive right direction. So we need to sketch minus two A. Minus two is heading in the opposite direction, so we need to multiply vector A by minus two. So minus two times vector A, which is one, two. Minus two times one is minus two. Minus two times two, minus four. Now we need to draw a line that represents minus two minus four. So we are going down by four and two to the left. So let me just pick a point over here, pick a point. So we're going down by four, one, two, three, four. And now I'm gonna move it to the left twice. One, two. Now it's very important that you draw an arrow that represents the opposite direction. So it's heading in the opposite direction, so it's gonna be arrow in this direction. 10b, work out a plus two b as a column vector. So from the previous question, we know what the vector a is. So vector a was one, two, and vector b was one minus three. So all we have gotta do now is substitute these vectors into this expression. So one, two, plus two multiplied by one minus three. What we need to do before that is to uh, multiply the vector B by two. So one, two, plus two times one, which is two, two times negative three, which is minus six. Now we're gonna add the vectors together. One plus two is equal to three, two plus minus six, which is minus four. So our column vector is three and minus four. Final answer. F and G are functions such that f of x equals 2 over x squared and g of x equals 4 x cubed. 11a, find f of minus 5. So what we need to do is substitute minus 5 into the function uh, f of x. So 2 over minus 5 squared Simplify it further, 2 over 25. Therefore, our answer in decimals is 0.08. 11b, find f composed g of 1. 
So first thing we need to do is use g of x and substitute 1 into the g of x function. So g1 4 x cubed uh, open brackets 1 cubed 1 cubed is 1 times by 4 which is 4 now sorry f of 4 input into the function of f which is 2 over x squared therefore it would be 2 over 4 squared which equals to 2 over 16 which can be simplified further as 1 over 8 and 1 over 8 can be written as 0 0.125 and that's our final answer. Question 12. The graphs of y against x represents four different types of proportionality. Match each type of proportionality in the table to the correct graph. So y proportional to x, that will be b. y proportional to x squared, that will be d y proportional to the square root of x that will be a y proportional to 1 over x will be c question 13 a b c and d are points on the circumference of a circle center o f d e is a tangent to the circle a show that y minus x equals 90 you must give a reason for each stage of your working. So the first thing I'm going to do is label the triangle B, A, D. So this angle over here, I'm going to refer it as angle B. And this angle over here, refer it as angle C. And we all know that angles in a triangle add up to 180. So therefore, Y plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. I'm going to label this equation, equation number one. So this is my equation number one. Now we're going to be using two circle theorems to help us answer this question. The first circle theorem we need to know is the alternate circle theorem. The second circle theorem we need to know is that when a radius and a tangent meet, it forms 90 degrees. Now according to our alternate circle theorems, angle B over here, is equal to this particular angle. So this angle is angle B. This angle and this angle are equal. Now according to the second circle theorem which states whenever a radius and a tangent meet it forms 90 degrees. Now here is our radius so it goes from 0 to D and this is my tangent E to F it touches therefore forms 90 degrees. So going to put a 90 degree sign right here. Now we could form our second equation b plus c plus x equals 90 degrees. Okay so b plus c plus x forms 90 degrees and that's equation number two. So all we've done so far is use two separate circle theorems and we form two separate equations. Now what we need to do now is subtract equation number one with equation number two. So what we should have is y plus b plus c equals 180 minus b plus c plus x equals 90 degrees, right? So B minus B cancels out, C minus C cancels out. So what we're left with is Y 
minus x equals 180 minus 90, which is 90 degrees. Question 13b. Dylan was asked to give some possible values for x and y. He said y could be 200 and x could be 110 because 200 minus 110 equals 90. B. Is Dylan correct? You must give a reason for your answer. No, Dylan is not correct because angles in a triangle need to add up to 180. Angles in a triangle need to add up to a hundred eighty degrees. So Dylan is incorrect because why? can't be 200 and x can't be 110 because it will exceed the um, summation of all angles added together in triangle which is 180. Question 14. The distance time graph shows information about part of a car journey. Use the graph to estimate the speed of the car at time 5 seconds. To find the speed of the car at 5 seconds we need to find the gradient at 5 seconds. To do this, I'm going to draw a tangent that touches 5 seconds and then calculate the gradient. So just a quick reminder, to find the gradient, gradient can be calculated as the rise divided by the run. Okay, so let me just draw my tangent. So this is my tangent. Now I'm going to calculate the gradient. So I'm going to work out the difference. So the difference from here to here, from there to there, it's 22. And the difference from here to here is 2. Now the gradient is equal to the rise, which is 22, divided by the run, which is 2. And for the gradient and the speed is 11. And that's your final answer. Question 15. A darts team is going to play a match on Saturday and on Sunday. The probability that the team will win on a Saturday is 0.45. If they win on Saturday, the probability that they will win on Sunday is 0.67. If they do not win on Saturday, the probability that they will win on a Sunday is 0.35. Complete the probability tree diagram. So we all know that probabilities add up to 1, so this should be 0.55. And if they win on Saturday, the probability that they win on Sunday is 0.67. Therefore, this is going to be 0.33. And if they do not win on Saturday, the probability that they're going to win on the Sunday is 0.35. Therefore, probably they're not, they're not going to win is 0 0.65. 15b. Find the probability that the team will win exactly one of the two matches. So using our tree diagram, we can answer this question. So therefore, our answer should be 0 0.45 times... 0.33 close brackets plus 0.55 times 0.35 
Therefore, our answer should be 0.341. Okay, so that's our final answer. 16a. On the grid, draw the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 12.25. So the first thing we need to do is find the radius. To find the radius, we're going to square root 12.25. So radius is equal to the square root of 12.25, which equals to 3.5. Now we need to draw a circle that has a radius of 3.5. So my circle should look like this. Okay, and that's our final answer. Question 16b. Find the estimate for the solution of the simultaneous equation x squared plus y squared equals 12.25 and 2x plus y equals 1. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to label the top equation, equation number 1, and the bottom equation, equation number 2. So, equation number 1, and equation number 2. Now I'm just going to rearrange equation number 2 to make y the subject. To do this, I'm going to minus 2x from both sides. So we have 2x plus y equals 1, subtract 2x from both sides. So what we should have is y equals 1 minus 2x. I'm now going to substitute y equals 1 minus 2x into equation number 1. So again, we have x squared plus open brackets 1 minus 2x close brackets, raise the power of 2, equals 1, 2.25. I'm then going to rewrite the equation as x squared plus, open brackets, 1 minus 2x, close brackets, open brackets, 1 minus 2x, close brackets, equals 12.25. I'm then going to expand the brackets, so x squared, 1 times 1, 1, 1 times negative 2x, which is negative 2x, negative 2x times 1 is minus 2x, minus 2x times minus 2x is positive 4x squared, equals 12.25. I'm then going to collect like for like terms to simplify the equation. So what we should have is 5x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 12.25. I'm then going to equate the equation to 0 by subtracting both sides at 12.25. So what we should have is 5x squared minus 4x minus 11.25 equals 0. I'm then going to be using the quadratic equation to find the values of x. So what we should have, so let me just write the quadratic equation out. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And what we have is the value of a is equal to 5, the value of b is equal to minus 4, and the value of c is equal to minus 11.25. So what we're going to do next is substitute these values into the equation to work out the values of x. So x is equal to minus open brackets, minus 4, close brackets, plus or minus the square root, open brackets, minus 4, close brackets, squared, minus 4 times open brackets, 5, close brackets, open brackets, minus 11.25, close brackets. 
over two open brackets five close bracket now what we should have is x is equal to four plus plus and minus square root of 16 plus 225 over 10 we can simplify this further by 4 plus or minus the square root of 241 over 10. Now I'm going to find the first value of x. So x is equal to 4 plus square root of 241 divided by 10. Therefore the value of x is equal to minus 1.15241747. So that's the first value of x. Now the second value of x, x is equal to 4 minus the square root of 241 over 10. Therefore, the value of x is equal to 1.952417. Now, to find the value of y, we're going to substitute the value of x into equation number 2. So, essentially, what we should have is y is equal to 1 minus 2, open brackets, minus 1.152417. Four, seven close brackets therefore y is equal to 1 plus 2.304843948 uh, and therefore y is equal to 3.3048 I'm going to do the exact same thing to find the other value of y so what we should have is y equals 1 minus 2, open brackets, 1.952417. So to find the value of y, what we're going to do is multiply this value, 1.952417 by 2. And then we're going to subtract it from 1. So minus 2 times it by 1.952417. Uh, minus that by 1. Therefore the value of y is equal to minus 2.9048348. And that's our final answer. Question 17. The histogram shows information about the times taken by some students to finish a puzzle. Complete the frequency table for this information. Now what we need to remember is the frequency density equation. The frequency density equation was frequency density is equal to frequency divided by class width. Now to find the frequency, we need to rearrange this equation to make frequency the subject. So to make frequency the subject, we're going to multiply both sides by class width. So therefore, frequency density times class width equals frequency. Now I'm just going to apply this to the information given to us. So for the first group, 
5 and 15, the frequency density is 4, and the class width is 10, so we 4, 0.4, sorry, times it by 10, which equals to 4. The next group we're going to look at is 15 to 25. Again, the frequency density is 0 0.6, and the class width is 10, so 0 0.6 times it by 10 equals 6. The next group we're going to be looking at is 25 and 30. So the frequency density is 1 and the class width is 5. So it'll be 1 times 5 which is 5. And the last group we're going to be focusing on is 30 to 50. Again, the frequency density is 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 times class width, which is 20. Therefore, our answer is 4. And that's the answers to this question. 17b. Find an estimate for the lower quarter of the times taken to finish the puzzle. 7b. Find an estimate for the lower quarter of the times taken to finish the puzzle. Now to answer this question we're going to be using the technique linear interpolation. But the first thing we need to do is construct the community of frequency table. So we have upper bound. We have the community of frequency. So we have less than or equal to 5, the commutative frequency is 4, and we have less than or equal to 15, the commutative frequency was 8, and then we have less than or equal to 25, the commutative frequency was 14, then we have less than or equal to 30, the commutative frequency was 19. And then we have, let's quickly do that, less than or equal to 50, the commutative frequency was 23. Now to find the lower quartile, we're going to be using this general equation, n plus 1 divided by 4, n represents the total, so 23 plus 4 over 4 is equal to, so 23 plus 1 is 24, 24 divided by 4 is 6. So the sixth position will give us the lower quarter. Now where does the sixth position lie in the commutative frequency table? Well, it lies here, here because six is greater than four, However, 6 isn't greater than 8, so it lies in between 4 and 8. So we're just going to write 6 here, and I'm going to put an x that represents the lower quarter. And now I'm just going to uh, draw a straight line, which represents my linear interpolation. So this end, we're going to have 4 and the upper bound is 5, 6 is the position, x represents the lower quartile, and on this side, 8 goes here, and 15 goes here. Now linear interpolation is very similar to similar triangles, so what we need to do first is find the difference between 8 and 4. 
So we need to find this 8 and 4. The difference between 8 and 4 is 4, so that goes on the denominator. Now we find the difference between 15 and 5, which is 10. I'm going to equate it to the difference between 6 and 4, which is 2. And then I'm going to find the difference between x and 5. So it'll be x minus 5. Now what I'm going to be doing next is solving for x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So 10 over 4, which is 2.5. I'm going to multiply that by 2 which gives us 5. So on this side, we have 5 equals x minus 5. Now to make x the subject, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So 5 plus 5 is 10 equals x. Therefore, the lower quartile is equal to 10. So that's our final answer. Question 18. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H is a cuboid. A, B equals 7.3 centimeters. C, H equals 8.1 centimeters. Angle B, C, A equals 48 degrees. Find the size of the angle between A, H and the plane A, B, C, D. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. In this question, we're going to be using trigonometry. So the first thing we need to do is find the length AC. To find the length of AC, we're going to be using trigonometry. So A and C over here. Now, bearing in mind each of these corners are 90 degrees, we're able to use trigonometry. So let me quickly draw all the information given to us. So we have, so far, the length of AB which is 7.3, and the angle is equal to, the angle BCA is equal to 48 degrees. So let me quickly illustrate this. So A, B, and C. The angle BCA is 48 degrees. right angle triangle and the length here is 7.3 centimeters we need to find AC so I'll put a question mark over here therefore we're going to be using the sine equation because we have the opposite and we need to find the hypotenuse so sine theta is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. Now we're given the angle which is 48 degrees. Equals the opposite which is 7.3 centimeters. divided by the hypotenuse. Now I'm going to rearrange the equation to make the hypotenuse the subject. So hypotenuse equals 7.3 centimeters over sine 48 degrees. Therefore, the hypotenuse is equal to H by B is equal to 9.82311896 centimeters. 
So that's the length of the hypotenuse. Now we need to find the angle between AH and the plane ABCD. So let me quickly draw a triangle to help you visualize the question a lot better. So we need to find the angle. So this is my angle here, x. And we are given the height, which is 8.1. And we know that the hypotenuse is 9.823119. Oops, I forgot the 8. Quickly go backwards. So 8. Two, three, one, one, eight, nine, two, six centimeters. So tan, theta equals the opposite divided by the adjacent. The opposite is equal to 8.1 centimeters, and we have at the bottom 9.823118926. And on this side, we have tan theta. Now to make theta the subject, we're going to take the inverse operation. So theta is equal to inverse of tan is the power of negative one over eight point one nine point eight two three one one eight nine two six close the bracket and when you input this into your calculator the angle should be 39.5089231 we're going to round it to 1 dp so therefore, our answer is 39.5 degrees. Question 19. Shape S is one quarter of a solid sphere center O. The volume of S is 576 pi centimeters cubed. Find the surface area of S. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. You must show your working out. So we know that the volume of S is 576 pi centimeters cubed, which is one quarter of the sphere. So to find the total volume of the sphere, we need to multiply 576 pi centimeters cubed by four. So that's 576 pi centimeters cubed times it by 4, which equals to 2,304 pi centimeters cubed. So the total volume of the sphere is 2,304 pi centimeters cubed. Now we are given the volume of the sphere as volume sphere is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. We're now going to equate 2304 pi centimeters cubed to the sphere equation to find the value of r, the radius. So 2000 three hundred and four 
y centimeters cubed equals 4 over 3 pi r cubed. We need to make r the subject, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So 2300 pi centimeters cube times it by 3 equals 6912 pi centimeters cube. So, so far, what we have is 6912 pi centimeters cube equals 4 times pi times r cubed. I'm now going to divide both sides by 4 times pi, which will isolate the r cubed. So 6,912 pi centimeters cubed divided by 4 pi equals r cubed which will give us 1,278 equals r cube. I'm then going to cube root. So cube root 1,278, which gives us the value r. So therefore, the value of r is equal to 12 centimeters. Therefore, the radius is 12 centimeters. We're now going to use the surface area of the sphere equation. So, surface area of the sphere is equal to 4 pi r squared which is 4 times pi times 12 raised to the power of 2. Therefore the surface area of the sphere is 576 pi. We are then going to divide it by 4 as the sphere S is a quarter. So 576 pi divided by 4 equals to 144 pi. Now we need to find the surface area of the two semicircles. So if you remember the area of a circle is pi times r squared. The radius is 12, therefore area times 12 squared and since it's a semicircle we're going to divide it by 2 therefore it is equal to 72 pi so we found the surface area of the semicircle at the top now we need to find the area of the semicircle on the side 
So again, we're going to follow the same procedures again. Area. Uh, circle. Equals pi times r squared. Again, we know what the radius is, which is 12. Divide it by 2 as it's a semicircle, which equals to 72 pi. Therefore, the surface area of shape S is 72 pi plus 72 pi plus 144 pi which equals to 288 pi it says that we need to leave our answer in three significant figures so I've converted this into a decimal which will give us 9 Oh, four point seven seven eight six eight four two. So we need to convert to one, sorry, three significant figures. So three S F. Therefore, our answer should be. 905 centimeters squared. So that's our final answer. Question 20. Martin did this question. Here is how he answered the question. Martin's answer is wrong. Find Martin's mistake. Well, Martin's mistake is here. When you multiply a positive number, the square root of 3, with a negative number, the square root of 3, the answer should be a negative number, not a positive number. So, positive square root 3 times negative square root 3 should be minus 3, not positive Three. So that's where Martin went wrong. Sean did this question. Here is how she answered the question. Sean's answer is wrong. Find Sean's mistake. Well, Sean's mistake is simplifying the third. So that's the incorrect answer. Okay. So let's simplify square root 12. It can be simplified as square root 6 times square root 2 let's simplify this further square root 3 times square root 2 therefore it should be 2 square root 3 and when you multiply it by 5 it should be times by 5 should equal to 10 square root 3 that should be it, 2 okay so the answer is not simplifying not simplifying the third square root 2 correctly should be ten square root three not Three square root 
2. Jackson is trying to find the density in grams per centimetres cubed of a block of wood. The block of wood is in the shape of a cuboid. He measures the length as 13.2 centimetres correct to the nearest millimetre. The width as 16 centimetres correct to the nearest millimetre. The height as 21.7 centimetres correct to the nearest millimetre. He measures the mass as 1,970 grams correct to the nearest 5 grams. By considering bounds, work out the density of the wood. Give your answer to a suitable degree of accuracy. You must show all your working and give a reason for your final answer. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find the upper and lower bound of the length, width and height of this cuboid. So upper and lower. The upper length is 13.25. The lower length is 13.15. The upper width is 16.05. The lower length is 15.95. The upper height is 21.75. The lower height is 21.65. Okay, and they're all centimeters, so you need to incorporate that. Our next step is to divide 5 grams by 2, which is 2.5 grams. To find the upper mass, I'm going to add 2.5 to 1,970 grams, which is equal to 1,972.5. And to find the lower mass, I'm going to subtract 2.5 grams from 1,970 grams, which is 1,967.5 grams. So, plus or minus... 2.5 grams. So I'm going to work out the upper mass, which is 2.5 grams plus 1,970 grams, which equals to 1,972.5 grams. And I'm finding the lower mass. So 1,970 grams minus 2.5 grams, which equals 1,967.5 grams. So the upper mass is 1,972.5 grams. The lower mass is 1,967.5 grams. Now to find the upper density, we're going to be using this equation. Upper density is equal to the upper mass divided by the lower volume. And the lower density is equal to the lower mass divided by the upper volume. Now we need to work out the upper and lower volume. So the lower volume is equal to 13.15 centimeters times 15.95 centimeters times 21.65 centimeters, which will give us 4,540. 0.925125 centimeters cubed. Now we need to find the upper volume. So volume upper, which equals to 13.25 centimeters multiplied by 16.05 centimeters times 21.75 centimeters which equals to 4625.409375 centimeters cubed. Now I need to find the lower density 
So lower density is equal to 1967.5 divided by the upper volume which is 4625.409375 which will equal to 0 0.4 2536. So the furthest they can agree to is to two decimal places. So so our answer is going to be 0 0.43.